And welcome to our Juneteenth service today in Federal Park. There may be a whole crowd on the east side, I'm not sure, but I know some came from that side to come over here. I know a lot of people made this possible, so thank you all for those who are providing the food. You'll see it back there, but don't go back there quite yet. Thank you to the musicians here in front. Jim, can you introduce our musicians for us? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. On euphonium, we have Tom Lemming. Oh. On trumpet, we have Ned Snow. Oh. And as usual, blowing my own horn, I'm Jim Tate. <laughs> and we are three fifths of the Sin Nombre Brass Quintet. I want to make sure we all know each other here. You recognize a lot of people, but some people may not recognize anybody. I want to make sure we have introductions to those who are visiting today. And I'm going to start right over to my left, because these are old friends of Jenny's and mine from Australia. And we told them months ago that we're having this service here, 10 o'clock on June 18th, and they said, we got to be there. So, so they came all this way just for this service. Jenny, you want to introduce them? Or have them introduce them? Jenny can introduce it. Okay, so this is Carrie. Everybody say hi, Carrie. Hi. <laughs> and this is Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> well, good That's good. Good <laughs> and ask them to talk because they have that wonderful Australian accent. And just, we always say that to Australians. That's all we do. Who else may be new here today? Oh, please. Yes, let's start here. Then we'll move over there. Well, I'm really pleased to introduce Karina Swing. Um, she's been a marimba mentor and teacher and friend uh, for me for over years, and she's come with all these instruments. Wonderful. Later. Later. I, I'm Lara Gooding, and I actually go to St. Bede's, but um, I'm also a member of the NAACP, and so I learned about this service uh, from them. So that's why I'm here today. Thank you for being here. Anyone else that would like to be introduced or introduce themselves? <laughs> oh, then last one. Then you're good. You're good. Yes, please. Love to. We're the three wise men from across the street. Oh. And we happened into the, Ju the Juneteenth celebration last year. Happened to be having a stroll. And on our way back, and, and we learned about this wonderful tradition now, I believe, in the third or fourth year, Reverend. Yep. And so happy to join you. Oh, Great. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so my name is Harry Everett, pastor of the church, along with Andrew Black. Is Andrew, he's been helping with the kid. Is Andrew here? Not yet. He has been here putting things up for the children, I believe. And, and Jen, his wife. They're stuffing the border kids. Oh, oh, they're stuffing the border kids. We'll talk about that in a second. Very good. So find yourself here in this sacred space. It's so easy to be someplace else, but find yourself here as we gather 
in this fellowship to celebrate Juneteenth, to celebrate Father's Day, to be part of the Pride Month, to be worshiping God as a congregation in a beautiful spot on the west side of Federal Park, underneath some trees, at least for a while. The sun may be moving. If I see people moving this way or that way, I hope you just don't move all the way out. Just stay and find some shade. And we're going to have a time of music, a time of prayer, a time of remembering, reading scripture and talking about that scripture for a, a, a few minutes. And then things really start happening. After this service, after what's in your bulletin, I'm going to introduce a few people then. There's going to be some dancing. Everyone still stayed here after I said that. They all stayed. <coughs> then there's going to be some food and music. And so this is a whole celebration. The whole body is here today. It's a whole growing the beloved community. And so grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. And so let us begin with a song. You'll see it inside of the first page. It's the national anthem. Lift every voice and sing. And so I invite you all to stand in body and or spirit for this hymn. We'll play an intro first, and then we'll come in and sing the first.
you, and you may be, be seated. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Nina Brown, who is our liturgist today. Please join me in the opening prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for change. Jesus, you revealed God through your wise words and loving deeds. And we encounter you still today in the faces of those whose society is pushed to the margins. Guide us through love, the love you revealed, to establish the justice you proclaimed, that all peoples might dwell in harmony and peace, united by that one love that binds us to each other. And most of all, Lord, change our routine worship and work into genuine encounter with you and our better selves, so that our lives. I would like to invite the children to come forward and join me here, right on the grass, right here. All the children. There's Leo back there, I saw. Oh, good to see you. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, this is moved right, right, right around here, sounds good. And what we always do once Leo gets here. All right, Leo, good. What we always do is, we always introduce ourselves, right? And so the children are going to say their name, and we're going to repeat their name back to them, okay? So we start. Brooke. Hugh. Leo. Okay, very good. I am so glad you're here today. Do you know what day it is? Can anyone tell our children what day it is? Okay, that's the first thing that came to mind, right? I was thinking Sunday morning for church, but that's okay. It's Father's Day, and so what we can do is we can celebrate our fathers, right? And be, uh, do something special for them today. So Father's Day. What other day is it today? Juneteenth. Have you ever heard of Juneteenth before? Have you heard of Juneteenth? You know what Juneteenth stands for? Well, it's really June 19th. What day is today? June 18th? So tomorrow is the real Juneteenth day, but we're celebrating that today. It's all about freedom. Freedom for the slaves and finding out after two and a half years of not knowing they were free, that they were free. And so we're celebrating that now. That took place a long time ago, but there's still people that need to be free today. And so we celebrate all the hopes we have that all people might be free. Now, Mr. Travis is coming over right now. He's going to sing a song that I hope you know well by now. And there, we changed the fourth verse. Do we? The fourth line, sorry. The fourth, the fourth line. So it goes, as we sleep, we sing this song. Okay, so the fourth line, everybody, we change the words from not being weak and he's strong, but being as we sleep, we sing this song. Travis, it's all yours. So Jesus Loves Me is the name of that song. It is a very old song. We know the song now. But I hope that it's not just Jesus Loves Me. I hope that Jesus then helps us love 
all the people around us, not only the people we see, but those we don't see today. Maybe they live way far away, and we would say, Jesus loves us so we can love them. And so let us remember that today. And we can do so by a blessing. The children have learned a blessing many years ago. I mean, I don't know how, well, not very many for some, because many years ago they weren't here. But through the years, our children have helped us with the blessing that many of you know. So they're going to give you the blessing first, listen closely, and then repeat that blessing back to them. I'm going to give this to Hugh, but I'll gather around Hugh to be able to say the blessing together. So can you get real close to the microphone? And real close to the Let us all say the blessing back, not only to these children, but to all the children in the world, as loud as we can. In body, mind, and spirit, may you be well this day, and may you be strong for the work of healing in the world. Amen. Now, one last favor I have to ask you. Can you take the offering this morning? Would you be willing to if I give you a basket? Okay. So let us now receive the morning offering. Thank you, obviously, for the generous offering this morning, but also want to note that uh, thanks to Jen with Family Ministries and Judy Crawford with Social Justice, we have compassion kits that will be going down to families and refugees on the border for families and children. And they have stuffed animals and all kinds of toiletries and other goodies, uh, granola bars and other things like that. And so we've actually have hundreds of pounds of goods that we'll be taking from this church thanks to your generosity. But anybody who would like to help assemble those kits would be more than welcome since the children will be doing that during this service. Um, but also we have so much stuff that we're going to probably need some adult hands to assemble those kits too. So we'd love to have your help after the service. Thank you, Andrew, associate pastor here. Thank you, Andrew. And on Friday, 29 students from Greenville, North, uh, South Carolina, 
were coming through, having been to Ghost Ranch and going to Manoa School, and they flew out early Saturday morning. They brought all sorts of supplies for these children's compassion kits, all the way from South Carolina. And they were delighted to help us out. So it's a connectional church, this Presbyterian Church USA, and we're grateful. And now, Nina, for our scripture lesson this morning. The Psalms, Psalm 78, verses 1 through 11. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to walk according to his law. They forgot what he had done and the miracles that he had shown them. The word of God for the people of God. I'm going to ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm going to ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready for the judgment day. My Lord, my Lord, are you ready, my brother? Do you want to make the journey? Do you want to see your Jesus? I'm waiting for the chariot cause I'm ready to go. I never thought I'd see that day ride when all my sins were taken away. Ride, my feet were stuck in the miry clay. Ride, I'll serve my Lord till the judgment day. Ride, I'll make a way where there is no way. Ride, I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna ride, ride. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, I'm gonna ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. Ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride till I see. song I'm going to do a favorite of mine. That... <laughs> Who can follow Tim? Thank you, Tim. <laughs> My goodness. And so, here we are on Juneteenth Day. Juneteenth. We haven't known about Juneteenth for a long time until a few years ago. It started showing up on my Presbyterian calendar. And I kept saying to myself, what in the world is Juneteenth? I have no idea. 
maybe a lot of us a few years ago had no idea, but hopefully by now we do. Year by year, hopefully we'll know more and more. And so today, we focus in on Psalm 78, only the first 11 verses. It's a long psalm. But let's see where that takes us today on this Juneteenth. So let us begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, holy God, you bring us news of your love every morning. And oh, how a beautiful morning this is. But be with us then in our eyes and our seeing, our ears and our hearing, our lives and our living this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Years ago, when my grandma was 96 years old, a year from her death, she fell at the retirement home she was living in back in Ohio. And so the paramedics came and they put her on a stretcher. And they must have been busy because they weren't really paying attention to her as a person, but more to her injury and wondering how she was going to do. And she then was carted off on the stretcher over to the ambulance. As Grandma is lying on the stretcher, she lifts her head up and she says, doesn't anybody want to hear my story? That's a grandma's story. Doesn't anybody want to hear my story? Only until recent years did I realize how profound that question is. Doesn't anybody want to hear our stories? We live in an age when people are trying to dismiss our stories. We live in an age when people are trying to help us maybe forget where we came from. We live in an age when we need to gather up the stories. We need to know where we come from. We need to know what took place before this day. We need to make sure that our stories blend with one another and that they're heard time and time again. Why in the world would somebody not want to hear our stories? Now this gathering here today isn't all about me just speaking to all of you and you're all silent. What I love about gatherings like this is that you can participate in the message. I hope you will, because this is a story about all of us. Whether we heard about Juneteenth only a few years ago, or maybe just this morning, or have known it all our lives, and though that's our history, we have stories to tell. But why in the world would people not want us to tell our stories or hear who we are and where we're from? Any ideas? Some people would like to believe the myth of America rather than the reality. Some people, Dennis says, would like to re remember or le know the myths <coughs> of America rather than the reality of America. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, some stories are so sad and painful that we don't want to be reminded about them. Some stories, Booker says, are so sad and painful, we don't want to be reminded of them. Thank you. Deborah. Truth is uncomfortable. Truth is uncomfortable. Thank you. Joy. We've heard them all already. We've heard them all already. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, yes, Janice. Repression. Right. Right. What else? Anyone else? If we take away someone's story, people feel they're taking away their power. They're taking away their humanity. Repression. Right? We've heard it all before. We don't need to hear it again. We've heard that before. Right? The Psalm 78. Anyone ever read Psalm 78 before? I can't keep them straight. But thank you, Jim. I'm glad you have. After how many years of ministry, I'm so glad. Psalm 78, the psalmist is reminding people the power of stories, the power of God's story, and how 
We need to tell that story to the coming generations. We need to tell it to everybody we see. We can't keep it quiet. We can't be silent. We can't be re repressed. Psalm 78 says, remember. And that's how we can find ourselves in community. That's how we can find strength as we share this life together. And so I ask today, who are the groups of people that we especially need to hear today their stories? What stories do we need to hear and remember and then pass down to our children? Any, any people long silenced as our brief confession of faith, statement of faith says? We listen to people who have been long silenced. Yes. The, uh, the original people of this land where our story is there was no one here, and the original people were here, and their languages were here and are being recovered. The original people of this land we were told in history books that no one was here when the people came into this land, this promised land of ours in, in America. But now those stories being recovered, we need to hear them. I'm looking over at this statue over here. You know who that statue was? I had to ask Bruce Black, since he worked here how many years. Bruce, can you tell us that statue? That's Peralta. First name is Paseo Day. <laughs> He's looking north. He's a conquistador, looking north, hoping there's more lands to conquer and perhaps even gold up north. He has his back to us today in our worship service. But that's what we have all around us. People's voices have been long silenced in this country. Other voices we need to hear again. Yes, Bruce. Today's victims of shootings, we were 11, I believe, in Chicago, and we'll move on, and tomorrow there'll be another group, and another group after that, and these victims will be forgotten and maybe never heard from in the first place. Victims of shootings in Chicago, there's been 11 so far today, and oftentimes we hear about the story, and then the next day there's more shootings, we focus there, and later on we forget who have been shot, and life goes on. We remember the voices of those who are fearful this day of violence in our country. Who else? Yes. If we listen to their stories, we may find out who they really are, and we might not know them. If we listen to the story, Nancy says, their stories, we might really find out who they are. We may not have known that before. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something if we did? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any others we're missing? Yeah, Judy. Well, I don't know that we're missing these, but marginalized people everywhere. Marginalized people everywhere. Hear their stories. Yes. Yes, George, right. I mean. uh, stories of value. I don't know a particular example, but a story that holds the value, we're passing these stories on to the next generation. And this, the story in this song is the story of a group of people who failed to live up to the call. In the psalm, it talks about people who have failed to live up to the call. We need to hear those stories of, hear stories of value and pass them on to the coming generations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mary. Transgender folks. Transgender folks. Yes, indeed. Transgender folks. We don't hear their stories enough or at all. Anyone else? Over here. Okay, Madeline. Uh, hearing other people's stories brings us closer together. 
Hearing other people's stories, Madeline says, brings us closer together. Yes, indeed. Roger. Oh, yes. Acknowledging the, the origins of Christianity and not a revisionist story that's being presented today because other people are uncomfortable with the original story. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. What I'm getting, what I'm hearing is we have a lot of stories to hear. And we have a lot of stories to tell. When this song was written, probably the biggest story that stays with us today is the story of the Hebrews enslaved in Egypt. It's a foundational story for our faith. When God told Moses to let my people go, and then we have that whole movement from slavery through the wilderness of 40 years. Have you ever seen the map of a wilderness journey of 40 years? It would have been done in 17 days if they would have gone straight. But their journey to the promised land is like this. Up and down and over and back, and they, they would complain and they would you know, be upset with each other and they want to go back to Egypt and they have to turn around and they come back. Forty years later, Moses was on the mountaintop, looked into the promised land. That's where they wanted to go, but Moses died on the mountaintop. I think, because getting back to your point, you know, that whole promised land wasn't just barren of people, it was filled with people and they took over like we did here. But wouldn't it be something if we then took the mantle of Moses and did all we could to start ourselves into a new promised land? Where there are people already, where we can tell our stories, where we hear the stories of three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, listen to their stories. Psalm 78 says for us to tell them the wisdom we have, but I can imagine we need to hear the wisdom of our children today and our youth today and those who are on the margins today, those who have been here since time began today, those who have been oppressed today. We need to hear the transgender folk today, our friends, our neighbors, we need to hear our stories. And once we do, I think this world would be the place that we'd want to be. Because all of us are hearing one another. And when we do, great things happen. I am so grateful for all of you being here today. May you share your stories not only with words, but with music, and soon dancing, and eating, and singing, and just simply being together as the people of God. Thanks be to God, everyone. Amen. And so I promise you, singing today, Precious Lord is our next song, you see it here, I invite you to stand either in body or in spirit.
can please remain standing as I say these words to you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And please pass that peace to those around you at this time. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ, Senor. <laughs> but she's with you forever. It's just another uh, elderly woman with gray hair. You know, like all of us. Please be seated. As we move into our prayer time, just a few words about the life of this faith community. This is not what we normally do. We don't usually meet here on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock under the trees. We normally meet in the summertime at 8.30 and then 11 o'clock with adult education in between. That will happen next Sunday, June 25th. I will be away next Sunday. And so the Reverend Raymond Rainey, and you may know that name, uh, actually Linda's husband. And we're so ecumenical here is unbelievable. We have an a, a Episcopalian priest preaching next Sunday. And he will be here in my absence. Uh, and our adult education program begins and continues our whole Earth summer, looking at the climate crisis. We have all the crises that face us in our Earth world environment. And so join us next Sunday. It's going to be on Water with Alan Hook uh, in the chapel or online. And then, I'm trying to think, any other... No, I think that's about all the announcements. Any other announcements before we move to the prayers? Any other announcements? Then let us turn to prayer. Received an email from Melissa Mitchell, one of our elders, longtime member of the church. Her mother passed away Friday evening. And so she was there back with her mother back east, but wanted to let all of you know of her passing. So we lift up Melissa, her dad, and her family this day. We lift up the reason why we're celebrating in the park today for Juneteenth, for all the stories that led to this day, for all the stories of oppression, hatred, stories that diminished lives, ended lives, stories that were so hard to share, but they were shared anyway, stories. So we remember Juneteenth about the day in 1865 when the word finally got to every enslaved person that they had been freed even though it was two and a half years earlier they were free may we continue that message throughout the world yes so i have a little story oh you. please do you took me seriously so i'm not a bible historian by any means but i do remember a story from the bible and it says the people of Israel were finally crossing the Jordan. And the leader said, the, the riverbed was dry. And he said, stop. I want the leader of each tribe to pick up a stone and take it with you. And take it back to your home and to your tent and put it up. And he said, in future generations, people are going to ask, What's the meaning of this? So why do you have this rock up here? And he said, this is to remind us that 
we crossed the Jordan on dry land. And we need to remember that God saved us and delivered us. Just as God can deliver us if we have faith. Um, that's my story. Anyway, I also want to make a plug, if I may, for the Santa Fe Soul Festival. So my wife has really been involved with the Soul Festival. It's been, I think this will be about the fourth year or so. We had a little hiatus during um, COVID when we didn't have um, a Soul Festival. It's going to be at the end of August, and it's going to run a couple of days. I want to thank... Um, First Presbyterian Church because they've been so supportive in our efforts. The Soul Festival is an um, activity that runs a couple of days to introduce and remind people of Santa Fe of uh, the fact that uh, there's a black heritage also in New Mexico and in the United States. So it's an opportunity to learn a little bit more about black culture, black music, Black culture, I think I said that. So uh, we have uh, some signs up that are early advertisement for the Santa Fe Soul Festival that will be taking place at the end of August. We want you all to be aware of it and if possible, come. And uh, we have some t-shirts and uh, we hope you'll stop at the booth and maybe consider buying a t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you, Booker. I had jokingly asked Booker before the service uh, what he was preaching on this morning. And so I didn't realize that you had something. So thank you. Thank you for that. Any other prayers or situations or places, people, programs to lift up today? Well, let us then bow in prayer. And we'll follow that with the Lord's Prayer. And please, I invite you to say that prayer in whatever tradition is right for you. So let us all bow in prayer. Let us pray. Precious Lord, take our hand this day. Lead us on. Lead us on to a world where all people can feel they can live fully and deeply without fear. Oh, precious Lord, take our hand into this world. O oh, precious Lord, take the hands of those who have been forgotten. Lift them up. Bring their hands to ours. May we reach out to those who are on the margins, to those who have been oppressed, to those who feel they have no voice, have been long silenced. So oh, precious Lord, take their hands. O oh, precious Lord, take our voices this day. Take our voices that we might stand up and speak for those who cannot, but then help them find their own voice. Oh Lord, let us shout and march. Let us remember and let us move forward hand in hand, never letting down. Oh precious Lord, take all our hands this day, from the youngest to the oldest, for those who feel so far from your presence, to those who feel you very close and very near. O oh, precious Lord, gather us in this day as we lift up our prayers to you and pray the prayer your Son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. We have one last song to sing. There's a bomb in Gilead. I invite you to stand if you're able.
And please remain standing for the benediction. But before the benediction, I would like to invite Madeline and Elise to come forward to introduce some people this morning that's going to help us from this point on as we go about this time of Juneteenth. So, Elise, you want to just share what's going to happen and, and Madeline as well. <laughs> We're so glad you're here, and, and I have to give an, a special shout out to First Presbyterian Church <clears throat> that we talk about being a bubble. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to give a shout out to First Presbyterian Church where I've been a member for 10 years, and any ideas that we come up with, the church is right there saying, all right. And like today, we're really going to put it to the test because after the benediction, we're going to have line dancing, and we have choreographer Diallo Johnson to teach us the line dancing. And we want to say that this is a real kind of miracle because we thought that the service would be over at 11.30 and that we would eat and you know, the schedule kept changing. And uh, since Diallo was supposed to start at 12.15, we were like, oh, there won't be anybody here then. So please come. Go, go, go. So, Diallo's here and he's going to be leading you in dancing shortly. <laughs> and, and part of this whole experience is that we're doing things we've never done before. And that that's, gonna, that's what fun is. <laughs> that's what fun is. We're going to do something we haven't done before. And after the dancing, uh, we have the possibility of experiencing and being part of an ancient tradition from Zimbabwe. And reviving and keeping this music going is part of a dedication of a number of people around the world. You can be part of that. So um, you can join us with the Zimbabwean um, marimbas and uh, Karina Swing, who will not let you fail. And so now we have a benediction, we followed by a postlude, and then we have the line dancing. Can't wait. But now, let us go forth into the world in peace, loving one another. Do not render evil for evil, but support the weak and strengthen the faint-hearted. Share your stories. Listen to the stories of others. Sing the songs. Tell God's stories of old and make them new this day. And may we move forward into this land of ours, strengthened by this time together as we share the love of God with those we meet. And now, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, go with us, remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen.
come on and stand up, please, if you're able to. You can come in and fill the space here. It's time to dance. <laughs> so we're going to start off with an easy one first. It's called the Cupid Shuffle. So I'm going to walk you through it, and then we're going to turn on the music. And I'm going to give you some variations, too. So there's going to be a more intense version you can do and a less intense version you can do. So the Cupid Shuffle looks like this. To the right, to the right, to the right. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. And he'll be saying this in the song too. Slide. And then when you hear the music, there are a lot of instructions that are going to be given. So I'm going to tell you what some of those look like before we hear the instructions. Okay? So, one is the basic one, the cha cha slide. Here you go. One, two, cha cha cha. One, two, cha cha cha. Right, left, march in place. The new, the Casper Slide Part 2, featuring the Platinum Band, and this time, we gonna get funky. Yeah. 
So I encourage you all to do it as much as you can. Thank you. Thank you. 